So where are we going, Misha? So, Jake, we are going to the grocery store, the happiest place on earth, because we have to get uh, essential ingredients for our St. Patrick's Day feast that we're gonna make. Um, St. Patrick's Day was sort of a big deal in our house because it was about making dinner, and my mom used to always make corned beef and cabbage, which, uh, well, I hate. Uh, <laughs> I don't really like it, but uh, my grandmother used to always make ham, so we're gonna make a, a really good roasted ham in honor of her. Jesse, are you Irish? Yes. Do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Yes. Are you Irish? No. Are you Irish? 100%. Are you Irish? <laughs> Partly. Are you Irish? No. <laughs> what are you? I'm English. Um, no, I'm Italian. So tell me, are you boys Irish boys? Yes. 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 What does it mean to be Irish? Uh, you're from Ireland? No, not exactly from Ireland. The Murphys have been here for a long, long time, and there isn't really any Irishness that's passed down other than the freckles. Um, St. Patty's Day has kind of been a tradition in our house, even though we are Irish. Every St. Patrick's Day, we do church, and we do a big family dinner. What is one thing that you think of as quintessentially part of Irish cuisine? Potato. The South American <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother's mashed potatoes. Potatoes. Stew. <laughs> stew? stew and more stew. Stew, potatoes, meat. What's the roast that you make? That roast. Corned beef. Corned beef. Oh my gosh. Are you ready to peel potatoes, Mom? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Okay. This is what we gotta do. This is how you peel a potato. Right. My Irish grandma, my grandma Handy, um, she taught me how to cook. So whenever I cook, I always, I you know, I always think of her. One tough Irish broad. One of the most important things she taught me is when I was eight or nine years old that I need to know how to cook and take care of myself because nobody's going to be doing it for you. So My grandparents immigrated here to the United States um, at a time where it wasn't so great to be Irish. And there was an association that if you were Irish in America, you were poor and probably drunk and probably criminal. You really played down in the outside world, outside of your house, where your family came from and that you focused on that, no, you're not an Irish American, you're just American. When my brother and I were born, it was okay again to sort of say where you came from and people were proud of where they came from. So for me, it's a way to kind of um, honor somebody who's really important to me. One of the biggest influences in my life was my grandma and I think about her every day. She died when I was a senior in high school, so she never saw me graduate high school and she never saw me go off to college and she's never, you know, she didn't get to see her first grandchild or or any of that and I owe a lot of who I am to this woman and a lot of what I know about this world to this woman and so for me it's a way to kind of honor somebody who gave me so much <laughs> okay so get us served up then there's a great book that's written by a philosopher named John O'Donohue and he has a section in it about um, Celtic hospitality and about the idea of taste and speech and that these are both aspects of communication. So the meal is really important that you get together and you create this meal and that no matter what you have, you share it with someone and it's a way to communicate and share who you are with that person. Are you hungry? I'm very hungry. Do you want some food? Yes, please. <laughs> I like that you're not even going to sit down. You're just going to eat no, a No, no. Oh, no. This is incredible. This is so good. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day, Jake. <laughs> Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you too, Misha. <laughs> it's better than Guinness. It's, well, no, nothing's better than Guinness, but... <laughs> mm, it comes pretty close.